girls. So we are going to be talking about how Potgar Pow made it number one on the world's best stir fried list compiled by Taste Atlas. For those who don't know, Taste Atlas is a website that compiles all these food recipes and food reviews from critics all over the world. We have five Thai dishes in the top 50 and at least two dishes in the top 10. Would you actually believe me if I told you that Pad Gra Pao is more of our national dish than the Pad Thai itself? And by the way, Pad Thai is ranked number eight on the stir fry list. This is for real because Pad Gra Pao is like the ultimate go-to dish for people who can't think of anything they want to eat. If you can't think of anything, just say Pat Pow and you know, job is done. Now this picture is doing Pow very dirty because actually Pat Pow looks more tasty than this. Center focus should be about the protein and the Pow itself or the holy basil that has been wilted. But you know, this is like more focused on the long beans, which shouldn't be. And about this long bean, this is like a huge debate in Thailand. It's like a huge discussion whether or not this these long beans deserve to be in the Pow. It's like how like in the Western world, you guys debate on like whether pineapples should be on a pizza. Well, in Thailand, we have this discussion as well. This is my version of Pat Pow. I made this, by the way, and if like Thai people saw this, they would be, you know, laughing at me because there is like not a single side of a chili in there. My tolerance level for spicy food has definitely gone downhill. I don't know why. It just keeps getting worse. I felt like when I was younger, I had more tolerance, but I don't know what happened. But anyways, going back to my version of Pat Pow, I love putting lots and lots of garlic crushed and I love um, dicing up onions, caramelizing it with the garlic and then putting my go-to protein, which is the minced pork and baby carrots and my long green beans and putting uh, oyster sauce, soy sauce, a bit of sugar. And um, this is also another, another um, ingredient that you can put in that is the dark soy sauce that would make the pork uh, brown and not too pale, if you know what I mean. And of course the holy basil, stir fry it together and boom, whack it on the rice and fry an egg on top. And of course, this would not be complete if I don't have this soy sauce to put on top of my fried egg, which is the Golden Mountain Soy Sauce Sauce. Not a sponsorship clip, by the way, but this is what I love. This is what I love with my girl pow. At number eight, we have our pad thai, but it does not look like that. Sad and very bland like that. Nah, -uh. um, I mean, come on, come on, Taste Atlas. I understand this is from Shutterstock, but is this the best that you can do? Pad Thai has a very interesting history going all the way back to World War II. That time, Thailand was facing a rice shortage. So the prime minister at that time was John Pun Pa or Black Pibun Song Kram, a military figure, and he was very clever in his ideas in how to shift the consumption of rice to noodles and as we all know like the Thai food staple is rice right um so he decided to push pad thai as a national dish you know to kind of like create buzz and create an incentive to you know consume more noodles is by introducing this new dish to build like an identity for Thailand even when we promote the national dish of Thailand is pad thai but if you come to Thailand and you ask like your local Thai down the street they're gonna say pad pao